Good morning. Sure is glad to see y'all here this morning. And I know everything's a little different because we've got you separated out, you know, and everything. But I don't think it's too bad. It's worth that to be able to come and be back together, right? So, uh, but uh, we love y'all. We And I just went ahead and hit the court because there's people that are watching out there that expect us to come on at 11. But I was going to dress y'all before we got uh, to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. The bathroom's back there. I've asked that you sanitize your hands before you go in the bathroom. Wash your hands after you're in the bathroom, then sanitize them when you come out. That way there's no chance to doorknobs, anything, you know, you, that you gotta worry about. We're asking that you don't use these bathrooms up here because I've gotta go through and try to clean everything you know, after the church service, sanitize everything. So, uh, and we don't have everything set up back here like we do up there for y'all to use. So we're asking that, you know, y'all try to use those restrooms back there. And uh, the tie plate, we've got it set up there, back there at the door on that uh, table. So just put your ties back there. Uh, we're trying to adhere to all the stuff they've asked, that, you know, uh, all the different things they've asked in order to do. And um, uh, like I said, we're doing the morning service for the people who are high risk. Low immune systems, people that stayed at home, took care of themselves, you know, kept themselves, everything. Then tonight's service will be for those people that are low risk and have been out and about and had to work and do everything. Nobody's trying to be rude by not shaking each other's hands. You know that. We're just smiling and telling you you love you. And I know it's hard for this church because we're one of the handshakingest churches and huggingest churches around. And that's a great honor. That's not anything to be ashamed of. And hopefully one day we'll be able to get back to doing all that. But if you just go back to straight doing that after being separated from everybody, whether it was the coronavirus or some other sickness, it would spread quick. So you've got to take time as you're putting everybody back together instead of just throwing everybody all at once. Because it don't have to be the coronavirus. It could be any sickness, the flu, anything could go through just mingling everybody back together all at once. But like I said, once again, we are so honored that y'all have chose to come. We've been looking forward to a day when everybody could be in church together. And like I said, this ain't the whole Sunday morning crowd, but it's quite a bit of them. And I'm, we are just feel so blessed. And we're so thankful that y'all been watching us on Facebook, those that could. I know that Leon and Liz couldn't. They didn't have any way to watch it. But they've been listening on the radio broadcast every Sunday morning, and we appreciate that. Um, we never know what's going to happen. We don't know what's coming on tomorrow, but we know one who does, don't we? Amen. And he took care of us through all this, and he blessed us with a way to have an outreach during all this, and we're going to keep it up. So, uh, but anyway, just continue to pray. Pray for those that are uh, uh, sick, those that are suffering. There's been a lot of stuff going on. All these rights, we know that uh, they're taking advantage of a situation, and there's no good in this uh, right and that they're doing. It's an evil movement. It's uh, We need to pray that God will put a stop to it. And uh, pray that God will bless this church that he would have us to be. I'm going to start us off with a, a congregational song. Uh, and uh, uh, y'all don't have any books. Y'all noticed that. Uh, they asked that you didn't have any song books in there. And those of you that have personal items, we've moved them. They're labeled in bags. Miss Charlotte was good enough to label them in bags uh, to, for y'all stuff. Uh, that, except for your Bibles. We left the Bibles on the pews, your personal Bibles. But all the other stuff uh, we tried to put out there so everybody wouldn't have to worry about touching that stuff. Something or need your stuff, it, it, it's out there. But anyway, uh, out there means fellowship. Fellowship, oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, before we get started, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. How about we do that? It's good to be able to pray with each other. For you as humbly as we know how. Thank you, dear God. Lord, so thankful for this opportunity to be in your house once again. It's a privilege and an honor, and we love you, God, and we're thankful. Lord, thank you for welcoming us into your house. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just feel welcome at home in our hearts and our lives to do, Lord, whatever and move amongst these situations. Touch those that couldn't be. Lord, their health, the things that are going on, Lord, and just encourage them, let them know that we love them and that we miss them and that you love them. Most of your uh, goodness this morning. God, in all things, we just lift you up and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why don't we do Amazing Grace? Uh, that's something everybody knows by heart. Keep laughing.
Some of you'd look better if you put the mask back on. But Lamar, <laughs> you'll be all right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, you ain't nothing can help you with a mask on or off. I mean, you did ugly both ways. Kind of get an amen. Out of it. Boy, I ain't going to put the church on the shelf. Yes, sir. Sure is good to see everybody this morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm not going to say too much out of the way because. Tough stuff up here. <laughs> I'm just getting started. I, know. <laughs> I ain't got on Nancy yet. Uh, Wayne asked me to do this song, and, uh, and uh, I'm going to try to try to do it for you. I come to you, the garden alone, while the year is still on.
You know, Amazing Grace is our, might we consider our theme song around here. But this, and I think it comes in pretty close second because y'all like it so much. Uh, I'll stand for Jesus and let the world go by. Y'all have a good E flat, E flat. It will fill with Oh, 
guess, unless Wayne wants to play it. Yeah, play it, Wayne. Get me back to the no, I you still got your feet. Hey, Mike, we'll just get everything going here. Thank you, Mike. Maybe. I'm trying to break this one back in again. I'm just taking a quiz. Okay. Fire by. Started out on the master's road. Everybody shone around and he fell down the road. God changed his life and he changed his name. When he testified, you could hear him all say, On the master's road.
said something about uh, handshaking. Boy, when it comes to Nancy, that's a good thing. Amen. Anyway. As long as she could slowly yeah. get talking, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, boy, if I had that mouth on my zero degree turn, I'd enter it into Indianapolis 500. I just couldn't hold it in the road. I hadn't done this song in a lot. She knows I love her. I pick on her all the time. And uh, and if uh, if she didn't know I loved her, I'd pick on her all the time. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate her today. Yeah, I'm sorry. Children are scattered all over the land. We lost our love, our fellow man. 
fathers and mothers are partying today. There's dust on the altar where we used to grow. Let's seek out the old path and walk therein. Our children are crying and dying in sin. Satan is laughing as God's people spread. There's dust on the altar Tears that was watching for brother and me are now called old fashioned, they're no longer seen. Free and proud hearts have gotten in their way. Our dust on the altar. Let's seek out the old path and walk therein. Our children are crying and dying in sin. Satan, he's laughing as God's people stray. There's dust on the altar where we used to pray. There's dust on the altar where we used to pray. And that's the truth today. There's dust on the altar where we used to pray. Amen. Let's do this old song in deep flat, if you would. Well, I'm glad that God likes to work when nothing else can. That's what I want to sing about. And, uh, you know, I've seen a sign I like that says over on Fairview South. I saw God doesn't have COVID-19. You can get close to Him. Amen. Uh, Amen. That's true, ain't it? You can get close to God, can't you? You've been to the doctor. He just shook his head. The night you've been suffering with pain in your bed. You hold on to faith, look for a miracle sting. Our God likes to work when nothing to the banker he 
God likes to work when nothing else will God likes to work when your back's the wall. When your face and the violence is not in the law. For there'll be no mistake when he touches and he Jesus and He, the oh Lord God likes to work when nothing else will. My God still works when nothing else will. Amen. 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 God still works. Somebody wanted to kick me. Amen. I tell you, if he decides to kick me, he better hang on to that foot so he can run after it's over with. Amen. Uh, too fat to run. Uh, one verse of scripture I felt God led me to is most appropriate if you want to turn to Psalms 20, uh, 122. Psalms 122. Most of you will know it by heart. <coughs> Got it? Psalm 122, verse number one. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you let us gather here today. And it's such an honor. God, to be back in your house with the smiling faces and the fellowship. And, and God, even though, Lord, we may not be given physical handshakes, spiritually, God, we shook hands with everybody in the house of the Lord. And I'm just thankful, God, that love is a powerful thing. And God, that, uh, Lord, it reaches out and does wonderful things in the hearts and the lives of your people. We ask you, God, today that uh, these would be blessed for their effort. And God, the unseen audience would be touched. And God, that we might just leave here today with a greater zeal and desire to serve you. And God, that our lives might be touched, strength renewed, our bodies healed. And God, our souls, God, refreshed by being in your house today. We do love you. Save that soul that's lost wherever they might be. And God, help us in the midst of all of this trouble. And we ask you, God, to bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I just want to speak to you a little bit about the joy that's found in God's house. Amen. Is anybody here today that would disagree that, that there's joy found in God's house? Amen. 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 Friend of mine, we've uh, been faced with this pandemic and it's called for isolation and we found ourselves, friend of mine, distanced from the church distance from fellowship of one another as Christian brothers and sisters. And, and there's one thing we, we can now say that we can understand the spiritual loneliness of those friend of mine that have lost their privilege of being in the house of God. Amen. You know, before you walk in somebody's shoes, you might not understand but since we've gone through this, we, we have a deeper feeling, a deeper heart touch feeling of those who have had the very privilege of being in the house of God taken away from them. Amen. 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 Friend of mine, listen. Uh, we see now 
Maybe how we've been too quick to take so much for granted. And now we realize just how quickly in the mind things can be taken away from us. It only takes one germ. Amen. There was a time we probably would have stood and said, there ain't nothing going to keep us from having church. Well, it did. Amen. It did. Oh, we could have been, we could have been stupidly bold, <laughs> I guess. And said, we don't care what's, what's being said. We don't care what's going on. We, we're going to do what we want. And, and whether anybody likes that or not. Wouldn't that have been a dumb thing? Amen. You see, friend of mine, God's in control of this coronavirus. God's in control of, of what's going on. Amen. And God gives us good sense sometimes to take care of ourselves. Might be the only time some of us has had any good sense. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. So we, we see that. We, we realize just how much we've taken for granted. You see, uh, if we come to church realizing this might be our last service, would we not have a better attitude in our heart toward worship unto the Lord? Amen. If we realize that the doors of God's house may never be opened again. Hmm. In the mind, all it takes is, is, is a, a, another pandemic or epidemic. Look what happened. Was that in 1918 that Joanne has been reading? Look what happened, friend of mine. You know, we're, we're in the midst of where people have become so si uh, so smart that they're, they're dangerously stupid, amen, uh, when they can uh, come up with a germ and, and, and spread it across the whole world. And bring people to a squeeching halt. And it's just going to get worse. The Bible says evil seducers shall wax worse and worse. This ain't nothing to what's coming. You know, our only hope is to pray that the Lord raptures the church. Amen. You hear me? That's our only hope today is pray that the Lord raptures the church. And then I might be worried about some of them folk that think the only place they can catch coronavirus is the church because they might not want to go up in the rapture. We might have to rub arms or something. <laughs> I just said that kiddingly. But what I'm saying, friend of mine, is that's our only hope today, isn't it? Amen. We're looking for someone, you know, they're bold now about uh, one of these uh, uh, people, I don't know if it's a mayor or whatever, they're bold about wanting uh, people uh, to enforce rules and regulation that, that was a friend of mine in agreement or, or, uh, uh, to the New World Order. The New World Order. They're, they're no longer trying to hide it. George W. Bush, friend of mine, was for the New World Order. Do you know that? Amen. Do you know that uh, there's been a lot of presidents that have said in the Oval Office, the only thing that's held back this, friend of mine, is God. And God has given us an opportunity to win souls, to bring people to the knowledge of the saving grace of God. God is trying to bring preachers back to the old-fashioned Holy Ghost type of preaching that will convict the hearts of the Lord uh, and let them walk the aisle and be saved. Glorious be saved. What in the blood? Man here today. Amen. Hey man, if I had a dollar for every one of you, I'd give you one for that. I've missed that a whole lot. Amen. You see, y'all might have been clapping out there in on the Facebook, but I didn't hear it. Hey man, listen to me. Well, God has given us a chance today. The psalmist was referring to his pilgrimage to Jerusalem when this was wrote. To go to the house of God. To humble himself in worship and praise. That was his intention. And that was what he longed for. You see if we've learned any, uh, nothing else. But I, I believe we have. But I'm convinced that most of us. Have a better understanding. That there's something pretty special. About the house of God. Amen. Amen. There's something pretty special. About the house of God. You know, I preached a message, you don't, you don't miss the well till the water's gone. And you don't miss church until you're just prohibited. Amen. Uh, hey, you don't get tired of sitting at home until you're told you got to. Right? 
When you're told you got to, boy, it becomes rough, doesn't it? Rough. Amen. We learn some things. I hope that will make us better warriors for the Lord, better Christians. Friend of mine, there's something special to walk through the doors and, and feel the presence of the Lord as His children gather together. I realize we bring God in on a, on a personal basis, but boy, isn't it wonderful when God's family comes together and the presence of God is in the midst yes, and we feel God when we come through the doors. There's something special about God's house today. We find peace in God's house. Peace from the raging storms that threaten our lives. Friend of mine, we find instructions and directions to keep our feet on the path of the straight and, and the narrow. We find that God has set a table and He's willing to feed our hungry souls and strengthen us for our journey. I find strength in God's house. Amen. Amen. When the whole world is combating me on the outside, there's just something different when you walk in Amen. to the house Amen. of God. Amen. Do you ever get the feeling that even though you're pressured by the ups and the downs of life in general, we all are, that maybe there's some threatening issue that's eating away at your heart, but, but when you come to church, you just get a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. You're fighting uh, out there, you and the devil. Friend of mine, I know God's in your heart. But when you come to church and, and you get all of God's prayer people involved and, and you get all of God's people praying for you, God just sends a feeling, it's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. It's going to be all right. When you get to God's house and you cast all your troubles and pony, you can lift up your hands and worship him. You can tell your heart, you feel everything's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. When, if you study that word cast, God's not asking you to politely, gently walk up to this altar and lay them down. Huh? Hey, when you get fed up, I'm going to get up behind. I've been behind that thing too long. When, when you get fed up with the things that's tearing you up, when you get fed up with your troubles, when you get fed up with all these things that's eating away at you, God don't want you to tiptoe to the altar. God just wants you to run to throw them down, cast them down, give it to them, and say, God, I put them in your hand. It's yours now. Hey, I you. Give it praise. Hey, man. We're so polite. Devil loves spiritually polite people. Amen. I'll try not to run us too close next time, Faith. I'll try to run down the middle. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Cast them upon him, he says. How many times have you come weighted down with heartaches and sorrows, burdens? That it took their toll upon you. Amen. God impressed your heart to pray. God impressed you to yield these things into his hand. And trust him to bring forth the help that you need. And in doing so, you have left God's house having company. That even though you can't fix it, God still can. Amen. 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 There's things you just can't do. If you ain't learning it now, wait till you get older. Amen. You'll learn it then. Amen. There's things you can't do physically. You're right. But there's things you can't do spiritually. Amen. Amen. There's things in your life and mine we can't fix. Amen. But God can. Amen. Are you listening? God can. Bring the mind of son. When you get to that place, you find the peace inside you, realizing that God is with you. Good things happen in the house of God. Did you know that? Good things happen in the house of God. Amen. It'll happen ever so 
serpent. If, if the gossipers will keep their mouth shut and open up <laughs> hey, the door, the heart, good things happen. Amen. Hey, right? Thank God. Facebook ain't been lighting up with gossip because the churches has been closed down. <laughs> ain't that sad? Hey, Amen. Wow! Wait until it gets started again. You know, I, I've been praising God. A friend of mine, Facebook wasn't uh, invented for God. It was invented for the devil to stroll and tear down. But God's been getting the glory out of what the devil done by preaching the word of God. Amen. Ain't that amazing? Ain't God good? Amen. Good things happen. In the house of God. Souls that are bound up in the mind for hell. Those that are entangled by the destructive nature of sin. Those that are cold and hard and full of hatred and despite and anger and rejection. There have been souls that have found a brand new life by finding Jesus. I'm glad to report you that souls can still be saved. Lives can still be changed. They just need Jesus. Amen. Amen. Here today. Amen. Just need Jesus. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Isn't that what it's all about? If it's any more than that, it's not of God. Amen. If it's any less than that, it's not enough. It's all about seeing souls saved today. Amen. How do they get that? By simply asking. Calling upon his name. Asking them to forgive their sin. Asking them into their heart. It's not rocket science. The devil makes us think it's impossible. If it had been impossible, you and I wouldn't be saved today. Amen. Amen. If I had to buy it, I never would get it. If I had to work, a friend of mine, beyond my uh, capability, I never would get it. Amen. Amen. I want to work for the Lord, but there's a limit to what any of us can do. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Today will be my first day of preaching three services again in one day. So by the night, I'll be dragging. Amen. But I'll tell you what, if Joanne comes at me with a spoonful of castor oil, I'll pick myself up. <laughs> what do you think about that, Smiley? <laughs> you don't have to be in church to be saved. Amen. But many have. Many have. And therefore, it stands as a reminder of when we turned their life around and, and inherited all the promises through God's Word. And, my, uh, my man, and it doesn't make me any better than you because I was saved in church. But, friend of mine, it is a reminder. When I come into the house of God, it is a reminder that I heard the Word that I was obedient to the call of God and that God saved me, saved me, gloriously saved me and changed my life. Amen. I'm still chained by the grace of God. I'm still saved. Amen. Amen. Here today. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. I'll try to behave myself. Faith. By faith, I made that first step. And that's all you got to make, you know. You got to make the first step. God, God don't drag you to the altar. People do. Can I say that again? Amen. God don't drag you to the altar. People do. Amen. God calls you to the altar. Amen. The first step is yours. You got to make that in faith. Friend of mine, then after I made the first step, then friend of mine, God took me by the hand. You see, after the first step, the devil no longer had hold on me. The devil had hold on me until I made the first step. When I made the first step, the devil was chasing me then. Amen. He had no hold on me. Yeah. He chased me all the way to the altar. I mean, I had his way. I, I never got saved, but he didn't have his way. Amen. You see, God took a hold of my hand. A friend of mine, listen. And there at that old-fashioned altar, I gave my heart to Jesus. 
I don't have to go back. Oh, there was a time in my early life of a Christian, the devil cried, kept telling me I wasn't saved and all. I'd carry him on this spiritual trail back over to Foster Mill Drive, back where the church used to be, back to the parking lot where the pew used to be when it was a church. And God convicted me of that. And God told me, he knows you're saved. You're wasting time. Don't care. Don't fool with him. And I quit fooling with him if I wasn't saved. And the devil wouldn't be trying so hard it's a reminder in my life and if you like I said you don't have to be in church to be saved some of you weren't but you got in church when you did get saved amen. Amen. that's important today amen important it's been different since Jesus has saved me when you come to God's house with worship and praise is your, atten your intention. You just never know what God's going to do. Amen. Do you know that? You never know what God's going to do through you. Amen. If you'll just come purposed to worship the Lord and praise Him. Amen. Amen. In Acts chapter 3, the Bible tells us that Peter and John was going up into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. That was 3 p.m. 3 p.m. was the hour of prayer that's associated with the evening sacrifice. The Bible said there was a certain man lame from his mother's womb. They laid him daily, daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. He laid him out to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Amen. In today's world, if they laid someone on our doorsteps, someone by the gate, we'd call 911. Yep. Most of us would never think God had anything to do with it, would we? I want you to hear this. This is a, a picture, a beautiful picture that the scriptures is presenting to us. Two men going to pray. It was the evening hour. That meant that it was the last hour of the day when prayer was going to be made in the temple. The last hour. And a lame man that had never walked his whole life was carried every day, every day, and laid there at the gate. And Peter and John must have felt something moving in their heart. You know when God's in it. Am I? I, I know. Uh, and listen, I, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but that's all right. Amen. They put me in Facebook prison. I, it don't matter. I, I know there are those today that, that claim they, they can do great miracles anytime, anywhere, anyway, but you can't without God. Amen. Amen. You know when God's in it. There'll be a moving inside of you. Somebody said, all you got to do is just, just quote this Bible. Friend of mine, the devil can quote this Bible. Amen. There has to be feeling. There has to be power. There has to be the spirit moving Amen. in these words Amen. today. Something must have been moving in Peter and John's heart. They said unto him, look upon us. They didn't set out to see a lame man healed. They were going up to pray. But we don't know what God will do when we get here. Amen. We don't know who God will save. We don't know whose body God will touch. Somebody said, I'm bad. I still believe in healing. Amen. Amen. Can't y'all testify to that? Amen. Amen. We don't know what God will do. He said, look upon us. The lame man that had been asked in alms, the Bible said, gave heed to him. And what Peter said, he said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. He said, rise up and walk. Amen. And he took him by the right hand 
And as he lifted him up, the Bible said that that strength came back to him. His ankle bones and, and his leg there had been to my, And the Bible said that uh, he walked and he leaped and he praised the Lord. And he entered with him into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. Isn't it a miracle? Isn't it great that he took a lame man that everybody walked by, everybody rejected? He took a lame man out of just what God had. Sarah, I serve it in the house of God. Amen. 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 Can you imagine? He probably walked by a half a dozen that walked around him the same morning to keep from being asked for alms. Amen. He probably had that Baptist syndrome. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Get a job. You've been here every day for a year and a half. Get a job. But he got something more than a job. He got a touch from God. Amen. And all the demons in hell could not keep him from walking and leaping and rejoicing over what God had done. Can you imagine the stirring that was caused inside of that temple? The first church of better than thou. <laughs> Amen. Within the temple of the first church of better than thou, where the big eyes and the little ewes all congregated. They were cold and dry. All they were was sap suckers. They didn't get nothing. They couldn't suck it out of somebody else. And here he was. Here he was. Same old guy that's been laying daily, walking and leaping and praising God. Can you imagine what went on inside that church? Amen. Well, I'll tell you, folks, we could see a lot more of the power of God if we do more yielding ourselves to the will of God. Amen. That's what coming to church is all about for us. Amen. Think about this. This man was probably not welcome inside the temple before he got healed. You see, friend of mine, they believed if you were had any kind of sickness, it was because you was a sinner. They believed if he were blind or, or born with uh, or couldn't walk or whatever it was, friend of mine, they weren't fit to come in the house of God. And the church of the day has got so self-justified that a sinner ain't welcome in most of them. Amen. David, it was not his fault that he was born crippled. It wasn't his fault. These high and mighty self-justified people sitting on the pew of the temple passed judgment on a man, friend of mine, and let's, let's just get it down. You want to know why he was lame? Or you want to know so he could be found lame at this gate on this very day Amen. that these men could come by, that prayer could be made, and the power of God could come down, and the church could see that God is still God. Amen. 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 Oh, let me hurry on. <laughs> I'll close in a minute. I bet if I'm going to preach tonight, I will just uh, bring them in and play them this, this video. <laughs> Amen. Whoa. Listen, friend. I want you to see what we see him today. He was probably not welcome. Who would have thought? That a lame man had never walked in his life could cause such an awakening in the church. You just never know. Amen. You just don't know what God's going to do. Hey, if, if you're not like a lot of churches and you don't put out a menu, you don't know what's going to happen. Amen. I'm going to get in trouble for this, but that's all right. 
When I'm talking about a menu, I'm talking about one of them that says, uh, Sister so and so's going to sing this, it'll last one minute and 52 seconds. Brother so and so's going to get up and pray, he'll pray for a minute and a half. And the preacher will be done by 12 o'clock. Hey, man, if you got any question, write it down and put it in the suggestion box. <laughs> Ain't going to be nothing happen there. A lot of people come to church with the attitude, ain't no need of going, ain't nothing going to happen. You're the reason it ain't nothing happening, you cold-hearted thing, you. Amen. It happened a lot quicker if God didn't have to work around you. It works better if God works through us. Amen. Amen. Instead of having to work around us. Amen. A far is easier to start with dry wood. Quit bringing wet wood to the house of God. Amen. Amen. I still believe God can do all things. I believe nothing is impossible with God, don't you? Amen. You say, well, God ain't raising the dead. God's raising the dead over and over and over and over and over again. Friend of mine, all across this world, doctors are mystified to the fact that they pronounce somebody is going to die, but God has kept them alive. Amen. God just ain't getting the credit because we went worshiping and praising Him today. Amen. Amen. Miracles are happening right at this moment. Amen. All around the world, and maybe one happening here for you. Amen. Maybe. Oh, I hurry. I just don't know. A lost soul that's on their way to hell can be drawn to the altar of repentance. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I've gotten trouble for saying this in my church. I, I don't believe in dragging people to the altar. Amen. I don't believe in that. I believe if, if, if God is impressing you enough to come talk to me, then take that feeling and pray for me. Amen. And the Spirit of God will move me. Are you listening at me? Amen. A lot of people have come to the altar because people would go and say, don't you want to go where your grandma is? Kids come and pray uh, what they tell them to pray, and they're out there lost and on the way to hell thinking they got saved because somebody told them. If somebody's got to tell you you're saved, you ain't saved. Amen. Amen. So Brother Garvey used to say, how can anything big as God move in your heart and you not know it? Right? Amen. I said I'd hush in a minute, didn't I? It might be an Alabama minute. Just hold on. Amen. What a feeling. What a feeling when you realize that hell will never bring the mind have any more hold on you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how close I was to dying and going to hell till I got saved. Heartbeat away, one breath away from hell. That's how good God's been to us. Every one of us here today, a friend of mine, was the same amount of distance. I tell people, a friend of mine, it don't matter how sick somebody is. It don't matter how long they've laid on a, on a bed of affliction. We're all the same distance from death as they are. Just a heartbeat. Amen. You don't know how many of y'all realize you don't have to be sick to die, but you are guaranteed you are going to die. Amen. Amen. Right? I preached this morning on when your frail tent is folded and ours is going to fold today. One way or another. Amen. You can rub yourself down in all that beauty cream. Bathe in them mud baths. Huh? Get you a hip tuck, a tummy tuck, a rump tuck, or whatever you want tucked. <laughs> it may make you look a little more presentable, but it will not slow down age. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. I heard it told of a lady that was real sick and in the hospital and she prayed and she said, God, am I going to die? I need to know. God revealed to her that she wasn't going to die. So she got plastic surgery. She got all of them tucks. They pulled her in where she needed to be, let her out where she needed to be. Isn't it amazing? Huh? <laughs> Dyed her hair. Hey, Amen. They let her out of the hospital. She stepped out all, off the street and a Greyhound bus run over her. <laughs> she got to heaven and she said, God, I thought you told me I wasn't going to die. He said, ma'am, I didn't recognize you. 
I, I don't know. I don't want to ever be where God don't recognize me. Do y'all? Amen. 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 I told some folks in Indiana they got her on hospice. Uh, been a long time since we've been up there. I think we said 15 years or more, right? And uh, I told them how to get us on Facebook. I said, I said, you ain't gonna see no little fella running around with dark hair. I said, I don't look like I did 15 years ago. <coughs> Isn't it amazing how people hold a certain picture of you and, and, and years and years and years, and then when they see you, they think, my God, what happened to you? <laughs> Have you looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> time. Time has surely made a change in us here today. I'll hush. Friend of mine, listen. There's no greater feeling than to know you've been redeemed. That you have the promise of everlasting life in God's glory. To know that the great physician can look upon you even though you're battling a sickness, even though you're struggling alone, friend of mine, but you're keeping faith in the Lord. Sometimes we say, why me, Lord? Now, it's normal, we always pray. Sometimes we can get so far down, that, friend of mine, it's, it's hard to keep looking up and we say, why me, Lord? Right? But you never, you're never too far down that God can't reach and get you. Amen. Amen. Why? Amen. Sometimes we wonder where God is. Have you ever... Ever felt so spiritually long, lonely that you wondered where God was? The devil can drag you down. Heartaches and sorrows can drag you down. Things happen. Amen. You know how, how far away we are from, a, from the, one of the greatest heartbreaks we ever had? Just a phone call. Amen. If they get a phone call about one of your children or your grandchildren. Amen. Huh? We're just a phone call away. Ain't you glad God will be with you? Amen. Even though your heart is broken in a million pieces, God's big old hand of love can, put, can, can hold them all. Amen. Hold them all. Somebody said, will he put them back together and make everything brand new? Hey, when you suffer loss, it's never the same anymore. But God will put things back together. God will give you strength and God will give you grace. But there will always be loneliness because of love, there's memories. And because of memory, our loved ones don't ever die. Amen. Amen. I, I, I keep uh, bookmarkers. There's Debbie. Amen. I've got Buddy. I've got Gary. I've got Mama. I've got Aldi May. Somebody said, why do you keep them? Well, it makes it easy for me. No, I'm just kidding. I like to. I like to look at them. I like to be reminded. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we get so busy. But this will this will remind you of people. This will remind you of people. That's why I love these bookmarks. Not only are they marking my scripture, but they remind me of things that they said and things that they done. One of Debbie's favorite phrases, no matter what she said. But you know I love you. I said, if you did, why are you saying it? Ah. But you know I love you. One of the greatest thrills she had, she just had to get us to, to ride down to, uh, toward Larry with her. She just wanted us like I had never seen cotton fields, but I just pretended, you know, she wanted us to see them fields so white with cotton. I still remember it just like it was yesterday. Her heart was just overflowing because of the, of the way that cotton looked out there in the field. And I was blessed because she was blessed. Faye, if she was here today, when that cotton got bloomed out, I'd ride back down there with her again. <laughs> Amen. Little things. Isn't it amazing? People don't have to do big things to... to uh, you know, etch their way into your heart. It's the little things, the little things today. Amen. Uh, I looked at Mamas and I remember how every, every time there at the last she wanted to, to give you a kiss and 
And hey, folks, there was some times I, I didn't think I was going to get back up. But I always got down far enough for her to, to give me a kiss. Isn't that something? That's wonderful today. Wonderful. Little things. And that's what it is about coming to church. There's so many little things that each and every one of us attribute in the service into God's house. And each and every one of us are precious to God and should be precious to each other. Amen. Amen. Are you listening today? Amen. Friend of mine, listen. I want to tell you there's joy to be found in God's house. Amen. If you'll just come looking, you'll find some joy. So much that our hearts should crave the opportunity to be in God's house. There's so much joy. We should crave being in God's house. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you a question. And y'all can play a song if you would. You're here this morning. What does your heart need to seek God for? Good things happen. We believe that. There's joy in the house of God. We believe that. We believe he is a sustainer. He is a, the good shepherd, the great physician. What does your heart need to seek him for? As I said, all things are possible to those who believe. If you don't believe, ain't no need of asking. But when God said to, to ask, to seek, and to knock, that was without any reservations whatsoever because behind that asking, seeking, and knocking, God gave a promise. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock, and it will be open unto you. See, friend of mine, God gave a promise. Amen. But all that asking, seeking, and knocking has to be done believing that God is able today. There's not a problem that can measure too big or too small that God won't help you with today. If it's a problem for you, it's a problem that God can help you with today. Somebody said, well, I don't want to bother God with my petty problems. They're only petty in your eyes. If it's a problem with you, it's something God wants to help you through. If it's bothering you, it's bothering him. If it's taking, I can guarantee you it's touching the very heart of God. You need here today. Simple this, if God is calling, you feel like he is, to pray, you shouldn't let anything hinder you because it's a personal call. A personal call. It's your time. It has nothing to do with anybody else. You say, well, won't nobody pray with me. They don't need to. They don't have to. I'm glad they do. But let me tell you something. Your time with God, your call to pray, has nothing to do with anybody else. It's all about you. What do you need here today? Deprive the Lord of the opportunity to help you. And don't deprive your heart of the opportunity to receive what God wants you to have. It's all up to you today, amen. The joy that's in God's house. What a great blessing to be here to preach and have y'all here with us today. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer while they sing. And if you feel impressed to pray, you don't have to come to the altar. I realize that you, uh, what you do, uh, you're practicing social distance, but you pray. Right there where you're at, if you want to come to the altar, come. But you pray. Father, Thank you, Lord, for this most blessed day. The house of God was opened up today. People hunger to be back in this blessed place. We put ourselves in your hands today, God. We're, we're trusting you for our well-being. God, if for some change something happened, and God, maybe... We might get sick. I'm not going to blame you, God. Lord, I, it can happen anywhere. I'm not going to blame you. 
I'm just going to trust you to help me as I struggle through whatever comes. Lord, if we might be a servant that's pleasing to you today. God, you know the hearts of every one of us. You know the needs that press so heavy upon our heart. We bring those to you today, God. I believe we pray, oh God, thy will be done. Not ours. God, put your arms around this precious group of people today. Touch their families and their homes. Touch where there's problems and heartaches and sorrows where the battles of life have been set them against them. God, help them. Help them, Lord. We love you. We claim victory in the name of Jesus. We are asking, seeking, and knocking, putting our faith in the promise that it will be done. Save our families that are lost. God, oh, they need your touch. Wherever they are, God, today, speak to their heart. I plead with you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. What a great day. You glad you've been in God's house? Give him praise. Amen. Give him praise. Amen. May the Lord bless him. Uh, pray for our the Lord will touch and bless there. And oh, I, I appreciate all of you for. Uh, uh, it's hard to not shake hands. I know it's hard not to hug next, but uh, just wave at everybody. And let them know you care. And may God bless you. Is our prayer.